badly sleeping in his chair, which the layperson will certainly not think is under stress. He's under some stress because his heart is continuing to beat. He has to go on using his respiratory muscles to breathe. Even his nervous system is working because he dreams. That absence of stress is death. Only the death has no stress. They had a clinic. They were very well known in the community and they expected little hands, of course, to take over the clinic and to be a surgeon. Um, well, um, he eventually did go into medicine, uh, but he had other ideas. The traditional approach was at the time and still is today that you are looking for a factor. And today you are now with uh, genes and you look at uh, uh, micro substances. On parle de biologie moléculaire. So you hope to find the molecule which is not right to explain the change. That was not his, his way of thinking. Even as he was a medical student, he was impressed that many kinds of different diseases from different causes seemed to end up making the patient have the same sort of pathological clinical picture. You know, they, so he began to wonder, well, there's some common factor here, which is quite uh, in addition to the bacterium or the trauma or whatever. It ends up making the patient express what he later described as the stress syndrome. If something is asked of your body, you have to adapt to it. And the way you adapt to it, of course, is what he figured out was that um, all of this, what he later on called stressors, um, act through your brain and in your brain actually release certain factors, particularly the, one of the most important ones would be ACTH or adrenocorticotrophic hormone, which is a hormone produced, which indeed um, affects the adrenals and the adrenals then um, produce or synthesize the steroids in response to this. He was a very hard-working uh, researcher and teacher. And it was later on uh, when he came over to the University of Montreal and had a much bigger experimental laboratory set up here <clears throat> and more of a staff that he began to develop the, the, the impact of his stress syndrome idea uh, took hold. And, and then it, it exploded because uh, it did have the effect of linking together something that had never been sort of synthesized before. That is that there's a general reaction of the body to all forms of what he called stress. In each chain there is one link which is the weakest. And no matter what stress of pushing you put on it, and no matter what direction, it will always predictably break right there. And it is just the same in medicine. And much of our scientific work in the laboratory here was uh, concerned with the establishment of the particular conditioning circumstances or predisposing circumstances which make an experimental animal react with one or the other type of stress disease. He uh, never undertook an investigation without covering everything to the point that I, I became uh, <laughs> uh, epuisé. He wanted to have all that had been done on that subject. And by all, he meant all. In fact, he had no short cut. He was the most uh, organized person I ever met. I would say a thirst for learning and for knowledge to begin with, an incredible curiosity, um, coupled with, you know, incredible stamina, an incredible amount of energy, 
I met him when he was in his 60s and he was almost running, even though he had problems with one hip. Uh, well then, later on in his career, as uh, you know, this whole idea of a stress syndrome was not just a physiological and pathological thing based on his rat experiments, but it became a general societal thing. That is today, I mean, terrorism is something that stresses everybody out today. So it became an enormous philosophical, economic, social problem. And if he were alive today, I think he would be extraordinarily interested in the, what's going on in a global sense. First of all, I think one has to realize his contributions. And I think realizing his contributions, it's no minor matter. Um, so I think that for those of us that studied with him, if we did not really, you know, uh, admire his accomplishments and his way of being and his contributions to medicine, science and society, uh, we would be very ungrateful. Ladies and gentlemen, Canadian Medical Hall of Fame Laureate for 2006, Dr. Hans Selye.